Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Ethereal Aeons Activation. If you're new to the channel, I'm Leslie Demai. Everyone else, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to talk about egregores. When thought forms come alive. So egregores are mentioned in occultism and most often associated with hermeticism and Masonic rituals, but this is a universal theme in our reality. An egregor is an occult concept representing a non-physical entity that arises from the collective thoughts of a distinct group of people. Historically, the concept referred to angelic beings or watchers and the specific rituals and practices associated with them. Uh, this included Enochian traditions. So this is really old, ancient stuff. But in more recent times, the concept has referred to a psychic manifestation or a thought form which occurs when any group shares a common motivation, being made up of and influencing the thoughts of the group. Okay, that's a big definition right there. The original Greek meaning was wakeful or watcher, and it was mentioned in the Book of Enoch where it described it as an angelic being. So there is an agenda behind every egregor, and those who are tied with the egregor the humans who energetically sustain it have no idea of its true form, nature, and its agenda. Mark Stavich has a book, and it's an amazing book. I highly recommend it. Uh, I'll have the link below. And I also attended a lecture on egregors and tulpas uh, that's available to anybody inside the School of Mysticism. So the news just had that lecture over a week ago. And so I'm very eager to present to you these further notions and concepts behind egregors. But let's get into Mark Stavich's book. And he said there was an even older definition, which was the home or conduit for a specific psychic intelligence of a non-human nature connecting the invisible dimensions with the material world in which we live. And I hope this brings some clarity to those of you who have been trying to come up with some reasoning as to why everywhere you look, people have been taken over by false beliefs and agendas. This is also why people can't expand their consciousness past social engineering and thought forms centered around salvationism. We know that the Archon's main tactic is to divide and conquer, but how do these tactics work like clockwork here? These entities work systematically, and when they become powerful enough, they are the actual hive when we speak of the hive mind. Where is human sovereignty? Why are more people unhealthy, lost, and disassociated, unempowered than ever? Could it have to do with egregors and how there are more incorporated egregors than ever before? Egregors overlap a lot with rituals and magic, and magic and occultism has been around since the beginning of this place. This realm is imbued with magic. Our thoughts create, thoughts become things. You put your request into the non-ordinary realms, and it appears after some time in our third dimensional space. Some people call it manifestation, and occultists can manifest, create, conjure sentient energy forces or entities that exist just on the other side of the veil. And that essentially is what an egregor is. And these entities just on the other side of the veil, they live and manage themselves beside us and through us. I want to make it clear that there is a difference between an individual using their own mind, will, and emotions to focus their thought power on an intention versus a room of a cultist with a big agenda. So doing inner work, focusing on your own spiritual evolution and growth versus a group of dark magicians creating a religious egregor are two different things. But there is a big gray area, a huge one. And it's like a buffet of egregors out there. And some of you like to go around and pick up some of those samples on your plate. And you might, you might get full on those some days. And then there are the others who stick to like their main egregor and they are loyal for life. This would be very common in religion. So a religious person, right? Um, egregors are most often than not anthropomorphized, which basically just means to attribute human form or personality to things that are not human. This happens a lot with religious characters and deities. 
also holidays and attributed characters with with the holiday so like santa the easter bunny all of this stuff but go ahead and take a look at this list here and you're going to see how egregors work and how they have completely taken over this reality especially now that we live in our modern days with our technology and everything is instant so we have from the times where people only believed in religion to now with artificial intelligence and so organized religions deity worship cults historical figures celebrities movies music the gregors work through these facets your government countries nations political parties these political parties are fueling the governments which are under an other a gregor you see universities ivy league schools professional sports teams corporations Ceremonial magic, the Golden Dawn system, Masonic rituals and symbolism, angels, demons, mass media, social media, artificial intelligence. What do all these things have in common? A lot of them are multi generational egregores. They've been holding down the reality for generations. And here you can see just some of society acting a fool. Hey, I've done it before too, going to a show, acting crazy screaming my lungs off <laughs> this is a girl um, screaming at the Beatles so this was really popular in the 60s girls going crazy over boy bands here we have people dressing up as Elvis Elvis has been dead forever but people still you know it's multi-generational they still love it here we have a stadium of people at a sports event I don't know what this is it might be soccer it looks like soccer I've done the same thing too I've gone to sports stadiums like you know trying to be a fan just, you know, you kind of go with the flow with these types of things. And that's why you can't associate yourself because you get caught up in it. It's contagious. Here we have the skull and bones. This was the, this is the fraternity and over at Yale University and it's multi-generational. And these guys over here, you think, oh yeah, we're just praising a fraternity. No, because it's nature. It's actual agenda is to govern the people. So, so it looks like our reality is consumed by these entities and it makes sense. It makes sense as to why there is genocide in the name of religion, <clears throat> why the earth is poisoned in the name of consumerism and why people trust their government enough to be so invested in their egregor. You see, as I said earlier, the egregors work through you. You don't work through it. So the Archon's reality is made up of foolery, of this type of trickery. So as long as you praise the egregores, you are in their web. Let's take a look at some more examples of really how powerful these egregores are. Uh, here we have a Buddhist prayer wheel. And I filmed this around 2015 in Dharmasala, India, and it was at the Dalai Lama's temple. So again, his temple, this is a quote unquote, holy sacred place. The Gregor's work uh, through grid lines in the uh, reality as well. It's not necessarily just an entity. The entity can be honed into a location and its energy can thrive there. The more that it's energe energetically praised uh, and receiving energy from people. So it's a holy place there. And this prayer wheel holds hundreds of thousands of mantras. So here we have the most common in Tibetan Buddhism, the Om Mani Padme Hom, which translates to the jewel of the lotus. And this mantra is everywhere in Dharmasala. It's across their Tibetan culture. And you walk down the street, you hear it playing 24 seven. So it's been recited billions of times, literally. So you can think of this prayer wheel as containing some of the essence of this egregor. This is how holy places work, as well as we will get into this as well. But, uh, you know, other holy sites like the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall, um, you know, all of these sites at the Vatican that are supposed to be, you know, these holy sites in Israel, Jerusalem has so many. So now take a look at this handheld prayer wheel. Okay. So compared to the other one that's, that's had thousands of people touching it believing in it, fueling it with their own energy willingly and adding power to it versus this, okay? And I think this is a good example of how you can look at 
uh, how egregors work as an energetic mechanism through the collective human thought form. And now everything is really a collective human thought form because now the worldwide stage is available to everyone in real time on their phone, you know, on their iWatch, where, wherever. It's, it's all available there. So they have commanded the attention of people to unheard of ways. Like this, this is really how the Archons have sinked their way into the minds of people you know, ritualistic practices, you're feeding an egregor that was placed there centuries ago. And the nature of that egregor could have changed. And you are not there when it was recreated. So you don't know the agenda behind the egregor. And again, it will work through you. You are associating yourself with it. So your thoughts will soon become in favor of how the egregor wants you to be and how it wants you to pledge your allegiance to it. So it's really tricky. And how can you tell if you're associating yourself with some sort of spiritual practice um, that's, you know, maleficent? Well, first of all, you should never, ever work with anyone, do any sort of teachings that's going to tell you you have to submit to some sort of deity outside of you or that you should summon some sort of deity. A lot of people in magic do this and to each his own. But in our school, we may teach you about these things. You have to be informed. You have to get the big picture. But at the end of the day, no one in our mystery school will ever, actually, it's not even allowed to, uh, will never tell you to worship anything outside of yourself or to summon a deity, especially some of these deities we're going to talk about right now. So back to egregores and magic. So you can make your own custom sigil versus working with something like King Solomon seal. And we'll take a look at this slide here. And each seal, it's representative of a planetary intelligence. And they have been used since antiquity. We're, we're talking old magic here. So these sigils have been used by thousands and thousands of people. Just like that prayer wheel, they are highly infused with energy and these sigils are highly sentient. They have their own agenda. They are egregores. So you can make your own custom sigil versus working with something like the Lesser Kia Solomon, which is a grimoire on demonology from the mid 17th century. And most of it was coming from concepts and ritualistic teachings that were centuries older. So you're dealing with ancient magic here. And here we have Solomon sigils. Every letter in these sigils, these, this Hebrew text, it carries a certain energy, like a music note. You might not be able to hear it like you can in music, but it carries a resonance in which it attracts the intent of the sigil. In this case, these sigils associate with a planetary intelligence. A lot of the sigils associate with entities and reinforce thought forms from all of the other magical practitioners who have used it since its conception. These pack a lot of heat. And in that sense, a sigil like one of these versus a sigil you create yourself is completely different. So you can create your own sigil and use your own thought forms, will, intent, and command what you would like to manifest. And it can have an incredible effect. It's clean and it's pure and it's coming from you. you. It's coming from the source itself. Whereas these other sigils might carry a lot of power but there could be backlash, there can be repercussions, right? There's always a ripple effect. So sometimes you can be knocking on the door thinking that it has a certain intention when in all actuality it's masquerading as something else with a completely different agenda because the egregores can cause chaos. They can uh, deviate from the original thought form once they've gained enough energy. And so it's like trying to ride a bull, you know, you don't, you, you don't know what to expect with some of this type of magic. So this is very common with practitioners. You hear a lot of 
you know, whenever you're practicing magic, if you're dealing with other entities, it's like, man, I don't even want to deal with people. So why would I go ahead knocking on doors to entities? That's just not how it works. It's all about honing in your own power. Stop trying to take the easy route. Cultivate your own power within. That's what we teach. That's what we're about. You do that, you're pure, you're good, you're safe, right? Nothing's going to even mess with you. It won't even be able to, to mess with your mind, right? These types of egregores mess with your mind. Then we also have the Masonic structure here. And so you're seeing you got to go to all these different levels. And each time you do, there is a ritual that takes place. The higher up you go, the more intense the ritual is going to be. And you're calling upon these egregores that, you know, this is why these societies stay secret the way they do because they're protecting their egregores. They're protecting their egregores. So you don't want to associate yourself with anything that's going to have you make like this rite of passage where it's you, uh, you know, during a ceremony and they're using the same ritual dagger that was used 500 years ago. And I mean, that's the way magic's done is the more times you use the same materials and the incantations and you do it on the same um, nights, on the same hour, the more power that generates, the more that intention is going to come into fruition a lot easier and smoother because it's you're working it like clockwork as well. So all of that is just not at all what we're about at the School of Mysticism. <clears throat> and it does not mean that you're less powerful. It doesn't. It just means that you're not going to be controlled by an egregore. And so these egregores, these people that are inside these, these secret societies are running all of the corporations. And so this is why we see humanity running on these cycles of the build up after the breakdown. This is known in Hinduism as the Yuga cycle. And we are currently in the Kali Yuga cycle. We're in the dark age or the iron age. This is known as the age of conflict. So the egregore does not per se die. And it for sure outlives its original humans who created the thought form. These power entities can run off course and create chaos, which is, which is exactly what's happening now. So if you see the logo, you know, no matter how colorful it looks, understand that you don't really see what's working behind it. It's not just popular because so many people associate with it. It's been constructed to manifest this way. And if you really saw what was there, okay, instead you see the mask of it. If you could see with your inner eye, you would be horrified and you would never consent to energizing such an energy. But the archons distract you with stories, whether they're biblical or something political, and they use images that imprint to the subconscious mind to lure you in time and time again. So what's to say that lack of spiritual sovereignty in humans is not correlated to the collective unconscious mind feeding these systems to this day? When humanity gains more lucidity, the egregores, which were once fed by their ignorance, begin to strike with, uh, with vengeance. So this leads people to deal with this phenomenon. Because in history, we have seen the fall of Rome. And in more recent times, we are seeing the collapse of financial systems. And as in a spiritual awakening, you have to face the dark sides of the psyche and the aspects that were suppressed deep within. You must confront the fear and allow the shattering of the old reality. This is what the archons avoid with, the, with their super ability, which is distraction. So if you are aware of this, but become distracted, then the confrontation and facing of your deepest fear never comes to be. And the attachment with the egregor is still there. So sovereignty only becomes a plan then. And it's something you plan to achieve one day rather than making it a mission, a lifestyle, an embodiment that you work on daily, hourly, moment to moment. So Take a look at all these companies that are just under the incorporation of BlackRock, okay? They're just under the corporation. And then I want to show you one last thing, and we'll wrap it up. Just looking at these slides, what I see, okay? We think that these numbers, these likes are inflating someone's ego. It's actually inflating an egregore behind it. 
the collective minds that are fueling political agendas are now in the digital realms. And now they're really having a go at this, okay? You notice how when the digital age came out, everything really started falling apart? At first it was okay, and now everything is completely collapsing. Let's take a look at Facebook. Everyone started to rear their attention away from Facebook, and it started collapsing. And so what happens a lot of times is these egregores, once people figure out what their true intentions are, as we talked about earlier when we said, their agenda. When people find out about their agenda, people turn against them. And that's what they've been avoiding, right? And so what happens is they'll usually change their name. So Facebook went to me- change it to Meta. Um, sometimes they don't bounce back. This happens to celebrities a lot too. Sometimes they won't bounce back. But here we can see all of these other icons, sigils from corporations all under the same umbrella. But you see these icons and you automatically will get an emotional response, whether you're aware of it or not. So whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, whatever, you're going to get an emotional response and that automatically links you to that egregore. So even just looking at it, here we have the religious egregores. I'm not going to talk about this much more. Um, There's just so much to get into, but we talked a little bit about the Tibetans, but let's take a look at uh, the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall. These people, okay, thousands of people stand in front of this ancient uh, wall, okay? It's the Western Wall or Solomon's Wall, Solomon's Wall. So here we go again with King Solomon. And it was destroyed by the Romans in 70, 70 CE. And so it's, there's only a little bit of the structure remaining. And people worship the wall. They worship the wall since the 16th century, okay? They've been worshiping this wall and they leave notes in the wall. They give their devotion. They think that by crying and feeling this emotion that they're showing their devotion. And meanwhile, they're staring at a wall. We know that in Islamic cultures, the bells, they, they have a calling to pray. You go to any Islamic culture, society, country, you're going to hear these loud bells going off. They're like sirens and everyone has to go pray multiple times a day. Okay. Let's Christianity with all of their deities, Catholicism, especially. These are all egregores feeding their main agenda. So it's very tricky because when attention is taken off of the egregor, there will be a backlash. When humans turn their back on their egregore, there is a big backlash. And that's what we're starting to see. But again, the distractions are keeping everyone pretty much in their sleep state. Okay. So it's very, very tricky. And just to kind of finish off here, how to know when egregores are maleficent. And I just took these three answers uh, from Mark Stoffage, just because I thought, yeah, this is pretty basic and it's really this simple. So when ideology overrules reason, this is why I said there is genocide in the name of war or in the name of religion. When facts are ignored, you can see this around around people who are political, let's say, right? They don't care. They'll always be a Democrat no matter what. They don't care. Anything can happen. They're going to be a Democrat. Okay. doesn't matter. They are a limiting factor for a specific outcome. Yes, they're limiting your consciousness. They're keeping you trapped in their egregore so that you cannot come into sovereignty. And their outcome is for you to fuel their agenda. So that is all for today. It's a lot to take into consideration. This is why we, you know, reprogram, deprogram ourselves, keep away from, you know, the hive mind, keep away from nonsense on news. Obviously don't watch television. You know what I mean? Um, Fill yourself up with things that are in favor of your sovereignty. And um, I saw these really interesting, funny images someone sent me. And so I want to share it with you guys. And this is what rebelling against the system looks like. This is you giving their egregores a big F you. Take me out of your hive mind. I want out of your hive and start your own reality. 
this place is still filled with possibilities and places for you to establish your own sovereignty and stay away from their egregores, from this toxic neural net of sleepers. Okay, so thank you so much for listening. Please check out the links in my description. Join us inside the School of Mysticism. We have a monthly membership where you can get access to over 10 courses, live events, an uncensored and private community to learn more about this type of stuff. Also, I have a free workshop. It's a mini workshop on how to breathe consciously and unite your breath with your movement for deep healing. And I also have one-on-one classes and my spiritual sovereignty is still available. So check all of that out. Please like, subscribe, and share with someone that you think might resonate. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you soon.